Hi, I'm Mike Holt, and uh, this video is for those of you that are going to be preparing for the electrical exam. And Eric, this would also, the techniques, you're going to kind of help us about for the engineers, those that are taking the engineer exam. So we're going to talk about how to prepare for an exam. In our textbook, I have some notes here. I'm looking at this textbook. This is Roman numeral X, I, V. That's 14, right? So it's page 14. I'm not sure why we do Roman numerals, but I guess the front pattern is Roman numerals, then you go to numbers. Okay. If you take a look at it, the very first thing is talking about steps to passing this exam. Number one I have on there being mentally, emotionally, and physically prepared. I've had people take in my class and then they drop out when I was teaching journeyman exam preparation, master's exam for many years. And I'd see them two, and they were just doing terrible. And I see them two or three years later and they say, I'm like, and they're doing great. I mean, it's like a totally different person. I'm like, what happened this time? He goes, I'm ready. In other words, there's a mental state that you have to recognize that until you made the decision, I'm committed, you're not going to be really focused. And guess what? It's okay not to be focused. It's okay not to be ready. So you don't want to be pushing a rope, but you got at some point, a, a parent died, a situation came up, a, you had a baby unexpected, uh, circumstances, all of a sudden you realize, you know what? I've been kind of screwing around for, since I was whatever, and it's been the, and you're 30 years old, 40, 50 years old. So you know what? I want to change my life. I'm tired of just di digging ditches or pulling wire. I want to move on. And I was thinking this morning as I was getting ready for this program here is that I'm thinking those of you that are taking the test, you get your journeyments and then, or you get your master's license. And I was thinking about you, Mario, and I was thinking, wow. You know what? Everybody that's finished my course should be getting the ultimate training library because you should be studying about estimating. You should be studying about business management, uh, life skills. I thought, you know why I thought about that? Brian, we were in Boston, and I won't name the electrical contractor's name. Do you remember how much he said he was paying his project managers? Yeah, over $200,000 a year. Over $200,000 a year. Now, you don't pay somebody in the electrical industry over $200,000 a year unless they are what? They're making you more than $200,000 a year. These people, and I thought, well, how did those guys, how could you possibly get a job making $200,000 a year or, or more than that? You had to have unbelievable skills in management and organization and planning. And I realized, holy mackerel, every single person that takes a course... They should take this, get the journeyman, immediately do what? Study for the master's. Immediately study for the business management, and project management, estimating the life skills, all our programs, because the more you prepare yourself and the skills that you get, the doors that are going to open for you are going to be so much more than you just get your license and now you're a master electrician, but well, we can't have you estimate and we can't have you project manage it because you don't know how to run a business. You got to realize you are, you are a business. Yep. You are blank, you are me, Inc. And if you want that business to be successful, well, it, you better invest in that business. Of course, you, you're watching video. That means that you purchased the library, but I'd recommend that you take all of our products, every single thing, go through the fundamentals, then the code, then the exam preparation, then immediately move into the next business section. I wasn't actually planning on talking about that. I was talking about how to prepare for the test. Okay, so now we get you ready. You're all mentally set. I need to go to Roman numeral 14. And, okay, look at the bottom, Mike. They're in the Roman numerals. Here we go. Mentally prepared. Emotionally and physically prepared. Now, not only do you have to be yourself mentally prepared. Okay, I am committed. I realize I need to focus. That means you have to make sacrifices. If you're going to be preparing to do and pass this exam, what a sacrifice you have to make here. Well, uh, you have to get with your family, and your family might not be supporting you. You know, sometimes your spouse um, is that not real. Come on, why do you have to do this? Why do we have to do this? And, uh, and you just have to set the focus. And you can say, listen, this is what I'm doing. Now, you have to prepare. You got to let them know. This is the time I'm doing it. These are the days I'm doing it. People need to have a schedule. So your family members need to realize, okay, he's going to come home and he's going to do this, or he's going to come home and he's going to do this at 11 o'clock at night, and you're going to go in there, and then you're going to get up at 4 in the morning. You're going to be working on Saturday, whatever it is. I mean, I would get up early in the morning 
And I mean, not that I wanted to, I hated getting up early because I delivered newspapers, so I hated that. But, and I would work late at night and Saturdays, oh, I would spend at least 12 hours on a Saturday. Oh, at least 12 hours on a Saturday. They knew I was gone on a Saturday. And I would get up early in the morning, and then you got, then they got to be quiet. You know, you got to make sure you have a quiet spot. So everybody has to recognize, and then eventually those that are not happy about it uh, will eventually just, well, fine, you know. But guess what happens when you start being successful? And you know what happens when you start changing and you start getting focused like that? Other people around you, even though they might mock you and even though it's frustrating, they get inspired by you. And all of a sudden, they say, you know, I think I'm going to start taking some class. I think I'm going to start doing some things like that. So emotional, physically, you need to eat well. You know, I'm not a vegan or vegan or vegan, vegan and all vegan. the other stuff and gluten-free. And I think all that stuff is whatever. You know, it's like, if you want it, that's fine. I eat okay. I eat careful. I happen to be a mountain biker and I get a lot of physical activity. And, and I've talked about this recently, people around me, it's like my stamina, and I'm 68 years old, is like unbelievable. I just don't get tired. Well, because when I'm riding so aggressively in mountain biking or road biking, whatever you do, my heart rate up is so high for so long that it gives me the ability <coughs> just to sustain almost anything. So I'm not saying you should be becoming aggressive and an athlete and working out. I'm saying, well, you know, walking a little bit, you know, watching what you're eating, trying to be careful with your sugars, processed foods, going to bed at reasonable hours, maybe not while you're studying because that may be out the door, but every once in a while you got to get recharged up. You might go for a month and all of a sudden, like, you know what, I'm not going, this weekend, baby, we're, I'm off. We're going to take a break. So you have to get people hope. You have to give them a focus. So uh, positive attitude. Listen, if you're watching this video and you actually have my library and it looks like preferably the ultimate library, um, you're already committed. And I can guarantee you, you complete the program I have, your income and your life projection and where you're going to end up is going to be unbelievably dramatically different than it could have been. All right, back to that moment. Um, Positive attitude, get support. Got to get a buy-in. Next one I want to talk about, managing your stress. <sighs> Wait, listen. People get stressed about a lot of things. And sometimes they get stressed, what is called life. Life is tough. So try to figure out what can you do to minimize your stress. You got to look at, okay, I'm going to be preparing. You get with your spouse, doing this. You're going to find a room. You start making plans. But listen. Make that commitment and stick with it. Don't allow people to bother you a little bit like, okay, fine, what do you want me to do? And then as soon as you, you, you deviate from your plan, then people realize, all I got to do is bother you enough, and guess what? I'm going to get you to stop. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep bothering you all the time. People know me. Oh, yeah, you're not going to bother me because I'm not going to stop. So nobody bothers me. They realize I'm focused. Uh, manage your stress. <sighs> I don't know. That's a hard one. So let me, let me ask you guys a question. Let's go with positive attitude, guys. Anything? I want to quickly run through it. Anything about a positive attitude? Brian? Um, you know, I, I think this is something I learned this, fortunately, when I was much younger. This is something that's probably one of the most important things. A lot of people are constantly saying how hard something is. They're saying that they're never going to be able to do it. They're saying all these negative things. And the reality of the matter is, if you meet me on the street anywhere and you say, hey, Brian, how you doing? The, the I want to say the worst answer you'll ever get from me is good because I'm always at least good and, and I'm good whether I like it or not. And, and I think it's, it's a mental decision and, it, and that sounds kind of like rah-rah and self-help or whatever. It's not. It's like, look, I'm deciding this is something I'm doing for me and I'm going to do it whether I like doing it or not and it's going to change my life. And so... I, as far as that's concerned, you have to decide this is what you're going to do. You have to buy into yourself and into your future. And then when you don't feel like doing it, don't say, man, this sucks. She's like, you know what? I'm going to do this because this is going to be awesome later. And, and just keep yourself mentally kind of charged up. Well, let me give you a little picture of the future. You've got in our programs, you watch the videos, you answer one of these questions. Oh, you will get a positive attitude. You will, you will get that automatically because I can guarantee you, you will be passing your test. You will be making money. You will be moving in the industry up faster than everybody else. I'm going to be gone here and all the team members are going to be gone. 
and somebody's going to be replacing us. And it's not the person who didn't want to study, not the person who didn't make the investment in themselves. So that positive attitude is automatically going to come when you are starting to make those small accomplishments. Eric? Right. I'm just piggybacking on what Brian said. <clears throat> what Brian said comes from one word, and that's vision. You have to have a vision. If you don't have a vision, well, then you're not going to use your time wisely. You're not going to use your money wisely. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to give yourself to. But if you have a vision, then you're going to say, yep. when, it, when everyone else is saying something, you go, no, I, I got to do this. Nope, I got to go study. Nope, you know what? I got a plan. Mario? Mike, it's also really, really important to rid, of all, rid yourself of all the negative people around that are not oh, supporting yeah. you and encouraging yeah. you. Get, get, get away from those people and just maybe it's time to be alone you know, for a little while and yeah. focus on yourself. All right, next thing I want to move on to is getting support. Um, my wife is amazing. I mean, she would rather me, I mean, I'm, I'm gone for all these days, I'm traveling, I'm, I'm writing, you know what I mean? I'm making magazine articles and I'm in the office and she comes in and I'm like, what? Oh, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? So, I mean, so you have to get somebody like, okay. And then, but you have to give them hope too. It's like, okay, like I told you, my wife knows, baby, I'm telling you, by the end of this 2020 code cycle, we got coming up in May. Okay, not May now, I realize it's going to be June. Okay, it's going to be June. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're going to start our life. And so we're all looking forward. So you have to let them, listen, this is the date I'm taking my test. I'm getting this done. But let's talk about support. Anybody want to make any comments on support? Yeah, I, I think um, this is something that people generally fail in in life. And that is they don't have support in anything they do because they fail to communicate to other people what their goals are. And even if somebody's not on board with helping you with the goal, if they know what your goal is and that you're committed to it, very rarely will they intentionally impede your goal. And, and I know, you know, growing... Uh, from being a, a young newlywed and, and having my own business and then and now working for you, if I communicate to my wife, hey, this is the time frame, this is what I have to do, this is why I have to do it, and, and we, 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 not just me, we have to be committed to this, even if she's not like totally like in, she'll at least support me and say, okay, you know what, I respect that you've made that decision, I respect that that's your goal, is there anything I can do to help? Yeah, can you get the kids out of the house so that I can, I need to work. Can right. I, can Keep them quiet, out of my closet. You know, so Eric, just a thought. You know, Mike, if you put a drunk and a millionaire together, you're going to end up with either two drunks or two millionaires. So you be true. careful who you are around. Yep. Gather around the people who you want to be like. Yep. All right, I'm going to move on to the next one. It's going to be, uh, we had support, managing your stress. I talked a little bit about that. I don't know if anybody has any uh, any other comments on there. Yes. Yeah. Boyd? It's a lot of people have a hard time taking tests that are just not great. I'm talking about preparing. That's, no. I know. So okay, go ahead. So part of that is managing the stress that goes along with, okay, I don't take tests well, so they psych themselves out. It, it's a matter of getting focus on how, how you can uh, just say, I'm going to be fine, just talking yourself through it and like, it's okay if I fail this, you know, if it, it's okay that I, I've prepared and, it, and I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to learn what I can learn and just try to overcome the mental process of freaking themselves out. Hold on. You're not going to have a problem passing the test. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Am I right, guys? Oh, that's right. Have You're a not going to have a problem passing the test. You just have to be prepared. So you get the library. You go through the books, you watch the videos, you answer the questions, you go back and you review the books. I can guarantee you the test is easy. It's work to get to it. So all you have to be worried about is that I finished the unit, okay, that I answered the questions, that I go back and review what I missed, that I watch the video again. All you have to do is exactly your work. The, passing the test, you can't say, well, I, I don't do tests well. That's a bunch of baloney. That's just because you were a kid <laughs> and you weren't focused. And of course, you weren't playing, you were just playing around. No, no, no. You will have no problem. So don't be stressed about passing the test. Just get your commitment to complete the program. Brian? Well, I think, um, so you're talking about people that say they don't pass tests and don't take tests well. A lot of people that I've talked to that say that, it's because they tried to cram at the last minute. They got all their books, they bought their ultimate library, and then real fast and 
they're taking their test in three weeks because if they don't, they don't get a promotion or whatever that happens to be. And they're trying to cram, 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 do everything really fast. And they get to the test and they're not prepared. They're like, oh, I studied oh, yeah. 50 hours. Well, you can't take six months worth of studying and thinking and processing time and squeeze it into two weeks before an exam just because you found out your company is going to have a position open. And, and yes. up until this point in time, you've procrastinated on getting your license. And now you're like, oh, crap, if I can just pass that test, I'll get a little bit more money. That's not preparing. You're studying your butt off for two weeks. That's not preparing. Preparing is everything we're talking about. You're setting aside some time. You have a vision. You've got goals. You've got a system. You have a support structure. This is the first day of the rest of your life. This is not passing a test. This is a life-changing event, and you've got to treat it like it's a life-changing event instead of treating it like it's just we're running to the grocery store and picking up some groceries. This is a big, big deal. All right. Next one I'm going to move on to is I'm going to talk. I'm sorry. I'm going to move on to is about take care of your eyes. You know, maybe you should actually have your eyes checked yep. as soon as possible before you even start the program to find out that, oh, I didn't realize that at this distance or because you're not used to having your eyes have this much work because you're really going to be working on it. So uh, I suggest that you do that. Mario? <clears throat> and sometimes uh, if you're like me, you wear contact lenses. Sometimes it's good to take your contact lenses off, throw on the glasses for a while, look at, look at the content, then take the glasses off put your contacts back on, you know, switch it up a little bit. Pay attention. Pay attention where you're, you're feeling some stress, where something is not working for you. Brian. So two things from a technological standpoint. Um, your computer has what's called night mode. When you're studying, if you're staring at your computer a lot, put it in the night mode. It cuts out a lot of the blue light, removes eye strain. You can buy monitors that have built-in blue filters, uh, blue glare. Um, to your point of getting an eye exam, um, and I never really had vision problems. I have very good vision. I found out at 42 years old that I've been colorblind my entire life. Severely red-green colorblind. I'm an electrician. Somehow I survived my entire career being severely red-green colorblind because it's the first time I had a comprehensive eye exam. So don't just go in and read the chart. Go get an eye exam. Okay, reducing eye stress. Now you have your eye exam. You have your, you have your glasses. You're, you know, you're getting comfortable. Uh, I'm afraid I might say, not say something here. Make sure you have a place that you're going to be doing. Uh, a lot of guys would tell me, man, they told their wife. And the wife's like, yeah, let's get him. You know, some women are pretty smart. Let's, let's get this boy. He's, finally, he's going to get it together. Finally, he's going to start studying. Finally, you know, he's going to be, he's going to man up here, whatever the case may be. And they're like, okay, I'm going to get you a spot. I'm going to take care of the kids. You know what I mean? Because, you know, as a team, right, we, we want, you know, you want to help the other person. So she'll clean out a closet, put a desk in there, put a chair in there, get the lights inside there, get it all set up. It's okay. That's where you're going. And there are wives out there saying, okay. I got the kids, go in your office, get your book done, get your study done. When you get that done, then you can come out for dinner. So there's some wives in there that are really, really focused and will help you. Other wives are like, oh, come on, why? Or even I'm sure husbands are the same way with the ladies that are trying to study. So get a workspace. Let's talk about the workspace. You need a table. Let me say, you need a table, comfortable. You need a chair. You need the proper lighting. You need the pencils, rulers, highlighters, your code book. You need to have spaced out. You need a computer. Uh, you need all your tools. You need to be like, when you walk in there, you walk in there, it's like, it almost feel like this. Vince, you know what I'm talking about? Your little spot. It's just like, oh, Yeah, you spot. definitely need a spot. You need to feel comfortable. You have to feel comfortable going in there. Yeah, because you don't if be you like, don't, you're shooting yourself on the foot, you know, from step one. Well, because you don't want to go there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't want to go on a dining room table where the kids are pulling the things down and they're coming up, they're climbing up on your lap, they're trying to get on the monitor, they're getting on the keyboard. And you, you, what you're doing that was like, okay, just stop for a second. But not in the dining room. You have to be away, close the door. Eric, you're going to say something. Yeah, so <clears throat> I did that at the local library. And I would have a table at the library and I had all my books out at the library. Well, you went to a library to do yeah, this. I went to the library. And it got to the point where the librarian would come at late in the day and come over to my table and say, just let yourself out whenever you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so find your spot. Anybody else have anything else? You're mentally prepared. You're physically prepared. You're eating properly. You're sleeping properly. You're checking out your eyes. You're, you're working with the family. You're committed. You're not going to worry about stress. You're going to pass. That's that kind of a question. But it's not just passing. Then you continue study. It never, ever, ever ends. Those of you guys that see me all the time, you see I'm, I'm actually I'm 68 years old. I'm still getting better. 
I'm still studying. I'm still paying attention. I'm still aware of what's going on. I'm on fire. And I started this when I was a pretty young guy, and all these guys here are doing the same thing. Brian? Well, I just have to, uh, if you want to go to my computer, so your son Michael does a really great job at having a work environment. And he, and he sends does. me pictures. It doesn't matter if he's at the coffee shop. He'll send me a picture. He's got his notepad and his pen. He's got his iPad on the stand and his laptop. If he's in his in his office, he's got his everything, every single thing. He, and probably because he's your son, right? And he, he was taught this. But, I mean... It doesn't cost a lot of money. Just you have a desk and you just be organized. Uh, you go to the library, you know, Michael texts me pictures all the time. Hey, man, I'm doing an estimate at the Dunkin' Donuts. And he's like <laughs> perfectly laid out at the Dunkin' Donuts doing his estimate. You just, wherever you're at, turn that into your study environment. Put in your headphones, whatever you have to do to be able to focus on what you're doing. Yeah. Now, my son, Michael, all his life, we're all like, oh, my gosh, I just hope he's not in prison. You know, that's that's really, that was the goal. You know what I mean? Just that he doesn't go to prison. If he does, he doesn't stay really long. I mean, he's always doing, and he's not a bad person. He's just a curious person, which is great being the electrical trade because he loves to take things apart. And, of course, he, then he gets bored not putting it together, and, then he, and he's all over the place. But, but he... When he started switching in from that young, going out, doing all kinds of crazy things, and now he is totally, completely focused. And he's only 33 years old right now, and he's doing amazing, absolutely amazing. So you can do amazing. So we're talking about the work, workspace. Workspace, we got the family, eyes, physical. What else do these guys need to know before they get started? Commitment, keep going. Mario, then we're having, gonna close it up. Having the right tools. Um, your ruler, your calculator, your highlighters. Make sure you have all the right stuff. Yeah. Uh, Lloyd? Uh, with today's world and technology, there's lots of ways you can uh, give yourself an advantage by putting <coughs> tests on little apps that will, you can take little self-made quizzes out of things. You well, can, you don't even have to do that today because all you have to do is take my program. There's so many thousands of questions. You don't have to make up any questions. You don't have to ask anybody to make up any questions. You don't have to go online and do any questions. All you have to do is make sure that you have the right materials that you have and answer every single question in this book because these questions are focused. I specifically wrote every question, every graphic, every text. Everything is focused specifically to take you from step one to two to three all the way through your entire career to management and estimating, project management, life skills. So I wouldn't go out and do all those things. I would, if you finish every single thing I have, then go back and watch the video again and answer all the questions. And if you've done all of that and then you finished, then guess what? Now go out and learn about sales and marketing and, and dealing with people and, and things like that. Eric? Yeah, also very important, find out when your brain works the best. There are some people, you know, the morning is a great time. I've heard it said, and I've seen it myself, that when you're learning, try not to learn after 9 o'clock at night. Because, uh, but, but it's different for every person sometimes. And find out when your brain works the best, and then focus on that time to do your studying. You know, I was looking at the book here, just looking at some comments here. One of the things it says, uh, actually, you better find out where you're taking your test. When you're taking your test. So sometimes people with all the studying, like, well, what do I do? Well, somebody better contact. If you're going to be passing a license somewhere, then contact. Go to mycolt.com. Click on probably exam preparation. It's probably linked here onto the states. And if you're in Colorado, you click on Colorado. You take the picture of Colorado or the list. You go there. Go to license report. So make sure you take care of all that paperwork and you get yourself organized so that you're going to be prepared to do that. Brian? Um, you know, we're talking about this um, if you want to practice taking something online, we have the practice mastered and journeyman exams online. So you might want to practice working on a computer for an exam because you're probably going to be taking on a, on a uh, computer. And if your exam is not in your home city, do yourself a favor and go the night before, get a hotel room. Don't get a cheap hotel room. Don't You don't have to spend $300, but get yourself a nice hotel room. Get a good meal. Do not go eating a bunch of crappy food the night before. Get a good breakfast with some protein, not a whole bunch of sweet stuff right before you take your test. This is like a, this is like a performance, and you've got to be on your game 100% when you go in there. When I took my Florida State, uh, Florida State contractor's license, I went to Orlando, and I lived in Fort Lauderdale, so we're not talking very far. I went there one week before the test. 
in a hotel and I sat from seven in the morning to 11 at night for six days, just by myself, totally focused. Do you know how much work you can get done after you finished everything for six days? And I worked every single problem. I did every single thing. Then I took the afternoon, maybe I got off at four or five o'clock on the day before the test, slept, ate well the whole time. And obviously I did very well when you take the test. Guess what? I was so focused. So don't just go rush out of a job site and do this and then just go take, you, get, you need to prepare. What am I test? What am I doing before? Work it out. Okay. A couple of things I'm looking on my notes here is uh, give yourself enough time to prepare. Brian, I think you said that. Listen, don't just like all of a sudden I'm going to, no, set a date, get it done. How long is it going to take Mike to complete a program? I don't know. Have you, have you done our fundamentals? Did you do our UNIC one or UNIC two exam preparation? I'd say study really, 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 really hard at least six months. Yeah. At least six months. Well, I have to take the test in three months. Okay, well then study the best you can for three months. I need study to take twice the as hard for three months. I need to take a test in a month. <laughs> yeah. Okay, whatever you got to do. But to me, the more you prepare, you can do, you can do well on tests. Eric? Yeah, and, there's, and I, I look at studying. There's two different kinds of studying. One is you're trying to find the right answer. The other one is you're trying to understand the question. And so try as much as possible. Don't try to get the right answer. Spend your time studying, trying to figure out, understand the question, understand why they're asking the question. Because if it's an example question, there's a good chance it's like something on the test. Well, here's the deal. You don't have to worry about anything. You just answer every single question that happens yes. in this book and all the other books. You don't have to do all that stuff because the program is designed to get you mentally thinking so that when you take the test, that would be like it used to be if you didn't have this program, right? right. But if you have a program you're following, you just do this, you're not worried about it, you're gonna pass, it's not even a problem because you had everything you had to do and you're finished. Mario. Let's say you do your program, you're overprepared, you go take the test and you get nervous. You have to have this mentality of being even kill. You, you can't have ups and downs. You got to be steady. So that's very important. Very important. Here's my comment on that. You do this. You have all the knowledge. You go in there. You go to take the test. And you totally, completely freak out. And you screw the whole thing up. It doesn't matter. Because you're going to take it again. So... It just doesn't matter. And you realize, well, you're all stressed out in the beginning. You, you're freaking out. Question one, I don't know. I don't even know what the I don't even know. Question two, now you're even getting worse. Question three, you're like totally. But if you know how to take a test, which we're going to talk about in another video, you're going to realize, yes, you're stressed out. You're all nervous. But once you get in there, it's like if anybody's done an athletic event, right? You get all stressed to get started at the starting yep. dock. You're, you're, you're getting at the starting gate, <laughs> barefooting or, or mountain biking. And, and then, but once you get into it, guess what? You're back to the world that you've been for months. You're in the book that you've been working for. And you're like, oh, I'm comfortable. So don't worry about the nervousness. Actually, the nervousness, you know, I'm a barefooted, world-class barefooted. Let me tell you something. At a world champion standing there in Germany or New Zealand on the dock and everybody in the world that is on live stream and all my peers are there, you're telling me I'm not freaking out? But once I take off and I get involved, then it's what? All that muscle memory, all that action, all that practice takes place and you don't even think about being stressed. It's okay to be stressed. Don't worry about it. Because you'll be prepared, you'll fit right in. And if you don't pass it, who cares? You take it again and you'll pass it the next time. All right, finishing up here, uh, stay organized, right? We're talking about a study area. Manage your time. How do you get all this stuff done, Mike? I'm a nine-time national barefoot water ski champion. I've traveled the world. I have seven kids. I have a wife. I have a business. I write for magazines, I, I create videos, I do all kinds of stuff. But let me tell you something, I don't waste a second. I can't afford it because there are things I want to accomplish. So if you're deciding, hey, I'm focusing on preparing for this test, well, guess what? No, we're not going to the movies. No, we're not doing this. No, I'm not going out there. I'm, not, I'm totally managing my time to use it the best I possibly can. Um, study anywhere, anytime. I always had my books with me, always. And I, they used to laugh at me on the job site. Oh, Mr. NEC Code. I'm like, 
they made fun of me. And I'm like, I got a baby. I mean, I, I, I was 17 years old and I got a young, young girl pregnant and now I'm a father and I didn't finish high school. And I had nobody to help me. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm freaking out. And I, I heard that if I take a test and I pass it, I'll make more money. And so that's what I was trying to do. And so I, if I was on a job site, I had my stuff there. And I, if we're waiting for, have you been on a job site and you're waiting for something, you know, waiting for tools, waiting for, well, then I pop my code book out. I get my, I got a lot of questions to answer. So always be prepared to study anytime. Mark, any last comments? <clears throat> yeah, I would like to say that um, even after you, you get topped out in your journeyman or your master, don't stop learning. It just, you know, we get a new code cycle every three years. There's publications. The magazines you write for, they're full of information, and just keep learning. Always have this attitude that I, I need to just take it all in. Let me tell you something. Exam is easy. You might have to spend six, eight months. You might have to spend 600 hours. You might piss off a lot of people because you're studying and you're making sacrifices and you have to do what you have to do. But you know how great it feels when all that work and now you get licensed. And like you said, Mark, we're not stopping here. Now, you dial it down, right? I mean, we're, we're not doing the effort. that we, We're dialing it down, but we're always moving forward. Anything last, guys? Because if not, okay, Eric? Yeah, always remember the competition is always with yourself. You're never really ever competing against anyone else. You're always competing with yourself. Well, yep. thank you guys for watching this. Hopefully that'll kind of get you focused what you need to do to make a lot of money, to feel good about yourself, and most importantly is, is, to, is to be happy. And if you take, make a lot of money, feel good about yourself, be happy, that's called success. Whether you make the money or not, but it's kind of nice to make the money. Let's be honest here. All right, God bless.